One, if uh, credit to Michigan State, Jonathan Smith and his uh, coaching staff, uh, did a tremendous job getting their team prepared for uh, a road game. Uh, it's Big Ten football. Um, we talked to our team about it. Uh, early conference game against a team like I talked about that's from the status quo. They've been one of the better teams. And, uh, we didn't get it done. You know, special teams, penalties, uh, the big plays on defense, and then the inability to run the ball on offense. When I see that from a big picture things, here's what I see. I see all those things are correctable. Right, we, we can correct the, the penalties. You know, we, we put ourselves in the bad position on special teams to have the type of penalties we had. Uh, the big plays on defense, that's about growing up. Um, you know, those guys had opportunities, and we, we got to do a better job of keeping the big plays in front of us. And then, just when we needed to be able to run the ball uh, on offense to finish drives, we were we weren't able to. Which, you know, when you have opportunities like that playing Big Ten football, you have to take them. Um, they're not going to give them to you. And I think uh, right now, as we talk about a player day culture, uh, it'll be tested this week because these guys need to get in here to get these things corrected. It's early in the year, so again, I'm not in here to tell you that the, the, the season is lost because we took a, a tough loss here at home against a good team, as we talked about. But I think and expect this team to respond the right way. Um, they, they've done the work. They continue to do things the way we need them done in practice, but it has to translate to games. And when we have opportunities to win uh, Big Ten games like we had with this one, we have to seize the opportunity. So um, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Mike, if you could expand on uh, the Aiden Giles game today, what, what, how you guys trying to defend them in their passing game and what they were able to take advantage of. Yeah, our goal was to make him beat us throwing the football. And guess what he did? Uh, they were a team that we decided we wanted to stop the run. Uh, we know that the run and the play action pass off the run is what they do best. Today, the kids showed us they go in playing drop back football. And, um, you know, some of the times it didn't look like we, we were in good coverage and we gave up some big plays. And, you know what, those are some growing pains that I hate that we have to go through now. Um, and, and I know for the people that, that support us, they, they don't like to hear it. But those are necessary growing pains that some of these inexperienced players are going to have to go through. We got to help them for, as coaches by figuring out how to protect them a little bit more, whether it's keeping a safety in the middle of the field or whether it's getting after the quarterback and forcing him to make fast decisions. Um, but, you know, Aiden Childs, our goal was to make him be the strong, and, and he did that today. So uh, hats off to that kid for the way he played. Mike, following that up, you know, we talked about the defense during the offseason, how excited this team was about that side of the ball. Is it a little bit disappointing that they gave up those big plays considering the depth and the I mean, It's the always other. disappointing when you, you give up 350 yards passing. I don't know how many big plays total it was, but it's the part of our defense that we understand and know that's you know, I mean, and so it's not as if we were surprised that, that we've got young corners and, and some guys that are playing their first football for us. And as I said before, it's a matter of one, those guys growing up a little bit and learning the lessons that come along with failing like we failed today. But I also think as coaches, uh, as we start to understand what, what, what who we are, uh, you know, keeping a safety in the middle of the field helps some of those young corners and maybe takes the air out of some of these deep balls. But, you know, the game plan was to make them beat us throwing the ball. And, and Aiden Childs and, and those receivers did a good job of winning. We had our chances and we just didn't take advantage of them. And to me, we've got to get that part fixed. Hey, Coach. Um, Sam, what's up? I wanted to ask you about the uh, kind of two, third and then fourth down and one. Um, the fourth and one electing to go for the field goal and then on the third and one. Um, not doing any sort of QB sneak. The field goal, was there any thought to going for it? And then Philly hasn't rushed a QB sneak, I don't think, this year. Is there any reason for that? Um, you know, what we called and how we called it was all game plan essential. Um, the third one and the fourth and one calling sneaks, hand it off. I mean, if we can always second guess every call we make in terms of what we should have done. You know, with the fourth and one call last week, I punted them both times and I didn't get that question. And we pinned them inside the 10. The goal was to pin them inside the 10 give them the long field, play the field position battle. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. We punted it down there, they hit a big play, and they got the ball across the 50-yard line. And that's where when I talk about taking advantage of some of the opportunities, we had opportunity with them pinned in there to keep the field position in our battle to win, and uh, we didn't get it accomplished. And about the highest field goal attempt, was there any thoughts to report on that one? 
No, I mean, Jack's out. We, we, we had a chance to go up two scores. If I don't kick, if I do kick it and miss it, you're going to be saying, why didn't you go for it? If I kick it and we make it, I mean, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't from that standpoint. But the smart play is to go up two possessions, 10 points. Ford Johnson, next level sports and entertainment. Coach, how do you feel like a Big Ten game this early? Obviously, the first time you got to play one this early in the season helps prepare you for down the line in October, November. Yeah, and this is probably the earliest we faced one, but, you know, we weren't surprised. We knew it was on our schedule. Um, again, Big Ten games are hard, tough battles, and today was just that. And I'm hoping this is one of those battles that, that as I always talk about, when we have failures, what's the lesson we can take from it? And the one I get just off the, the, the cuff is that when we have chances to win in the Big Ten and we had our offense on the field for a drive to win it, we had our defense on the field for a drive to win it, and we had our special teams on the field to give us a chance to go up two scores, three phases, and neither one of us or uh, either of those phases were able to, to, to take the victory. And the Big Ten ain't gonna give it to us, so I've got to get us in the position to make those plays and, and, and when we need them. All right, Alex. Hey, Alex, uh, good to see you. Alex, preseason you talked about, you know, competing for championships, you know, conference championships. So when you have a loss like today, where you, know, you guys were up five minutes ago and then falling in this, uh, how, how do you use today as maybe an example for and what's, I guess, your message with this in terms of that bigger picture? Well, the message is that all is not lost. I mean, this is a Big Ten uh, game to put ourselves behind the eight ball starting um, starting behind in Big Ten play, but I mean, we've got a long season. So I'm not going to sit up there and, 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 and have this uh, the poor me feeling sorry for ourselves. I mean, we lost a tough game at home. It's one that we had a chance to win. We got to get on the tape, and I got to figure out how to get us to go win these games. I mean, uh, Damon said something to head coaches the other day. He said something about well, we got to win the games we're supposed to win. Well, this is one we should have won. And we got to find out, find a way to win it, and it starts with us as a staff uh, establishing it, and making sure that these guys understand. When all three phases have a chance to win the, the game for us, none of us came through. We're over three, and that's the part we got to get fixed. And just curious if you're willing to share, what did you say to your team after this game? I mean, I just told them, I mean, you know, ain't time to have the poor meetings, you know. See a couple of those young corners, man, with those, you know, tears in their eyes. It's, you know what, these guys come to compete. They put a lot into the work. Uh, my, my message is all is not lost. And if we're player-led like we say we are, then I'll see them back in here Monday with the right mindset to find a way to get prepared to go down and, and plant the seeds to go down in, in Charlottesville against another really good team, a, a regional rivalry game, old ACC foe. Uh, they're not going to feel sorry for us, so we need to get it corrected, get over it, and get ready to go play. Hey, Mike. Sure, what's up? Only 86 yards rushing this week after going for over 200 last week. Just what you talked about the front seven all week, but was also something on your part too that was unable to get that game won. Yeah, we were on edges the whole day. We had a penetration all through the A gaps. I mean, we have to cover people up. Um, you know, the good thing when you watch it is we get the, the real time information. It wasn't a scheme. It's a matter of the fundamentals being executed up front. And, you know, this is a Big Ten team. We knew they play heavy handed, a very physical group that. We've got to win at the line of scrimmage. And today we were edges in the inside when we needed to run on those fourth and ones that Sam asked about. You know, when you see that type of color inside, it didn't give me a confidence to say, let's line up and just knock them off the ball. We got to figure out. And there were times on those uh, second downs where we could have got the first down if we just knife the ball vertical and not keep running lateral. So a lot of good coaching, a lot of good teaching we can take from it. I'm looking forward to getting on the tape and then getting these guys prepared. And, and I know that you were, Perry was injured, rotated through a lot of guys in the secondary. Was that because of injury or dinged up or out of necessity, just trying to find a guy that could get a stop for you in the second? I mean, Perry played injured. I mean, we knew he had the, the hand, the finger deal. Uh, that shouldn't affect corners. I mean, we, we're going to play these young guys. We have to, you know, when you play the amount of plays and the special teams plays that, that they had. I mean, it's unfortunate, man. We got some talented young corners that, uh, I mean, they got to grow up. And we got the front seven, and people understand that it's going to be tough to run it against our front. And so what we've got to do now is, is have a good mix of being able to get after the quarterback. And, and then, again, today that kid did a tremendous job of uh, making the plays, made through the deep ball down the field, and, and put it in position for those guys to uh, take advantage of those opportunities, which we missed our share of those as well.
the GOAT. So I know you mentioned uh, some of the big plays the defense gave up, but can you talk about the some of the key takeaways that Glenn had as well as Dion Husky? Yeah, I mean, we, we had some takeaways on defense. You know, Glendon, as I told you guys, is one of those special players that always has a knack for being around the ball and, and this playmaking ability. We could just eliminate the, 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 the one 15 yard penalty play. Like, you're a veteran player now, we don't hit the guy out of bounds. But when it comes to being around the football, being a guy that's a ball hawk and, and can make plays and affect the game on defense, uh, Glendon's one of those guys. Uh, Jalen's interception was good to see him. It was one of the times where we had a safety in the middle of the field. We played deep third coverage and they got through it to us. And, and Jalen made a play from a confidence standpoint, much needed. But, you know, we, we got to grow up a little bit at that, at that position. There's no doubt in my mind we will. Uh, those guys are they are resilient, young corners. Uh, we can't be afraid to play getting beat. You know, as coaches, again, we can help them some, and I expect us to make some of those changes or we'll make the necessary adjustments to get those guys a little help. Uh, hey, Coach. I'm Jack. What's up? Hey, Jack. I'm Jack from WAC. Um, Ty Feldman has been great through both games so far. What role do you think he's going to have in the offense going forward? I mean, I think we talked about he's been a playmaker for us for the last couple of years, and he's waited his time to kind of become, you know, the compliment. He and both Kate and Prather are both two talented receivers in this league and there's no doubt when we need a play uh, Ty has been one of those guys consistently that's come through with with those plays and we're going to need him we're going to need his leadership uh, you know, the locker room I'm sure is down as they should be because you invest a lot of time and energy into these opportunities you only get 12 we're down to 10 we got we kind of let one we had one taken I mean because you have Michigan State correct they took the game they drove it down and kicked the winning field goal uh, they did what we didn't do, and, and to me, that's the part uh, that, as a player-led team, and as me as the head coach, that we got to come together and get that part fixed. Thank you, coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.